Looking for a quick, easy quilt where you can use up some of your larger scraps? Or maybe you want an excuse to treat yourself to some new fabric. Either way, this is a fun quilt to make for both beginners and more experienced quilters. All you need are squares, just simple squares. The actual pattern in this quilt comes from the way you arrange your fabric around the center block. That's how this pattern got its name, Around the World. You can go around the world, or the center square, each time you add a new row. In this series, you'll learn two different methods for making an around the world quilt. On the first trip, you'll get some pointers for choosing fabric and laying out your quilt. The second video in this series will showcase how to use strip piecing to speed up your cutting and sewing. You can download these free directions at learnhowtoquilt.com under quilt classes or click on the link below. These fabric requirements are based on 7 inch squares, but any size square will do. For this quilt, I use seven different fabrics, one for each round, but you can get by with less if you decide to repeat a round as seen here. The center fabric is repeated in a later round. If using scraps, you'll probably end up with many more different fabrics. With this pattern, it's okay to mix up fabrics in different rounds, as long as you stick to the same color, value, and pattern type. Here are some examples to show you what happens if you choose different values and pattern types. In this quilt, the orange sunglass print stands out as it's much more graphic than the other oranges. They're all orange in color, but the print and value of the sunglass fabric is different, so it pops out. Most of the rounds here are mixtures of different fabrics that share common values in color. The green fabric on the right stands out because its print is more graphic. Notice the blue fabric left of the center square on the bottom. It has a different pattern, but it blends in more with the other blues in that round. Gather your fabrics. These are leftovers from other projects. Lay them out in a line to decide which fabrics look best together. This quilt has seven rounds so you'll have seven spaces that I've labeled from A to G. When using scraps, you'll want to grab fabrics of the same color and or value for each round. Note that some of the rounds only require one or four squares, while other rounds need 12 squares. I have a lot of blues and newsprint scraps, so I know that I can get 12 squares out of this pile. I have less orange, so I'll place that fabric last as I only need four squares. Not a fan of scraps? Purchase new fabric and add to your stash. Take pictures of your fabric groupings to make it easier to compare on a final sequence. When you decide on your favorite grouping, label the fabrics A to G. Some beginners might feel overwhelmed picking fabric and then deciding the order they want their fabric to appear. Coloring in the squares to get an idea of what that finished quilt's going to look like usually helps. Following the cutting directions on this sheet, cut one 7 inch square of fabric A. Then cut four squares of fabric B. You can cut these individually or cut a 7 by 28 inch strip. Actually, I like to make this a little bit longer than 28 inches, about 28 and a half inches. Fold in half and cut seven inch segments. Now this only works if you're using the same fabric in each round. If using scraps, you'll cut each individually. Cut eight seven inch squares for C. You can get six squares out of each one of these 44, 45 inch strips. What I like to do is just cut two of them line them up, and then cut one stack of 7-inch squares and a second stack of 7-inch squares. You can use the excess for scraps. Continue following the cutting directions till all the rounds have been cut. Before laying out your quilt, you want to make sure to label your fabric. Start in the center with A, and then add four squares on each edge to complete the B row. Add eight more squares for the C row. Notice the top square. The tiny fish are swimming up and down rather from right to left. 
like in the other blocks. It's easy to fix this now just by turning it. Remember to take care of using directional fabric. Lay out the next round and continue till all the squares have been added to the quilt. Take a picture for reference. It's not too late to try a different sequence. Rearrange the squares, take another photo, and then compare arrangements. Here's another quilt all laid out and ready to be sewn. Put right sides together. Pin the side to be sewn or find another method to keep the squares in order. I always put the side to be sewn in my right hand and then I place that side next to my machine foot. I stack all the sets in this manner in order to get them ready for assembly line sewing. Then I chain piece all of them using a quarter inch seam. After sewing, the sections will be in order, making it easier to return to the layout board. Put right sides together, then pin or hold onto the right side, and continue in this manner till each row is sewn together. Press the seams in each row in opposite directions. Then pin the rows together, sew and press. And here's my quilt top. Hope you decide to try a trip around the world. As I said earlier, this is a great pattern for beginners. If you'd like to learn how to use strip piecing to speed up your cutting and sewing, stay tuned for the next video in this series. For more free quilting tutorials, visit LearnHowToQuilt.com. Please share our videos with your friends. Thanks.